One of the earliest public key crypto systems is the merkel hellman knapsack algorithm, which uses mathematical problems to secure communication. In this first part of our series, we'll explore the math and algorithm required to generate a public key. We will also cover the role of a super-increasing sequence and discuss modular inverses, which are key components in this process. Now, a public key is necessary because once it has been generated, it can be shared and used by others to encrypt a message. When the encrypted message is sent, the recipient uses their private key, which is also produced in the process, and you'll see how in this video, to decrypt the message. This ensures that only the recipient, who possesses the corresponding private key, can read the message. That being said, the very first step in generating a public key is to create a super-increasing sequence. A super-increasing sequence is a sequence of numbers where every subsequent term in the sequence is greater than the sum of all previous numbers in that sequence. For example, let's call our sequence D, and my sequence will be the numbers 2, 3, 7, and 13. Take a look. 3 is greater than 2. 7 is greater than 3 plus 2 which sums to 5, and 13 is greater than 7 plus 3 plus 2, which sums to 12. Therefore, we say D is a super-increasing sequence. Now, for the sake of simplicity, in this video, we're using a super-increasing sequence of four elements. But in practice, the sequence should be long enough to ensure security. For example, you should have more than 100 terms, and each number should be significantly larger. But regardless of what your super-increasing sequence looks like, it will be part of your private key, so it must be kept secret. Now that we have our super-increasing sequence, the next step is to sum up the terms in the sequence. 2 plus 3 plus 7 plus 13 make a sum of 25. Mathematically, this is written like this, where we have the symbol for sum, and given that we have four terms, we write down 4 up here, and underneath we write down i is equal to 1, for the sequence d sub i. Once the sum has been found, we then choose an integer that's greater than that sum. We'll call that integer m. So m must be greater than what we just found, and it can be anything, just as long as it's an integer. Let's say that m is 29. You'll find out later that this value you chose will be part of your private key, and will be used to decrypt a message once it's been sent back to you. But more on that later. We have to choose another integer, which we'll call w, such that w is less than m, and it's co-prime with m, meaning that the greatest common divisor between w and m is 1. Let's set w equal to 24. Since 24 is less than m, it's an integer, and it's also co-prime. You can verify that on your own. That is, the GCD between 24 and 29 is equal to 1. In step number four, we need to find the modular inverse of w mod m. This is mathematically written as the modular inverse of w mod m. Our value for w is 24, and our m value that we chose was 29. What we're looking for here is a value x such that when multiplied to 24, its product is congruent to 1 mod 29. That is, what value, when multiplied to 24, its product, when divided by 29, gives a remainder of 1? That's sort of hard to do, so we use the extended Euclidean algorithm to help us out. Here's how we set it up in the past. We write down four columns, x, y, r, and q, where r represents the remainder and q represents the quotient. We set it up by setting the first row as 1, 0, the value of m, which is 29, and in the second row, 0, 1, the value of w, which is 24, and we go from there. We take 29 divided by 24, and through long division, it looks like this. 24 fits into 29 once, and we get a remainder of 5. The remainder part goes here, and the quotient part goes here. Then we take this value, the quotient, multiply it to 0, then subtract that from the numbers above. So 1 times 0 is 0, 1 take away 0 is 1, that goes here. 1 times 1 is 1, 0 take away 1 is negative 1. We continue this process until we reach a remainder of 1. So now we divide 24 by 5, here's how it looks, by long division. 5 fits into 24, 4 times, 
4 times 5 is 20. We get a remainder of 4. So we place the 4 here, that's the quotient, and the remainder down here. Again, the cycle repeats. 4 times 1 is 4. 0 take away 4 is negative 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 1 take away negative 4 is positive 5. Let's divide 5 by 4. By long division, it looks like this. 4 fits into 5 once. 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract, and we get a remainder of 1. So we've reached a remainder of 1. We'll fill in this column with 1. The quotient is 1. And we do this one more time. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. 1 take away negative 4 is positive 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Negative 1 take away 5 is negative 6. Now this value, the one that we found here is very important to us because it tells us the modular inverse of 24, but we want the positive version of this. And to get the first positive modular inverse, we simply take the value that we find here and we add to it the mod value of 29. So the first positive modular inverse is actually 23, even though negative 6 fits the congruence. That value right there will be called the modular inverse of W. And that is also part of your private key. We now have all three components of our private key, the inverse of W, M, and the super increasing sequence. Now for the last step in generating our public key, for each term found in our sequence D, we have to compute a new sequence which will serve as our public key by doing the following computations. We'll call this new sequence E, and that will be our public key sequence, which will be used to encrypt messages moving forward. The terms of E are found by taking the value of W and multiplying it to each term in D, which I will call D sub I mod M. Let me show you what I mean. Remember, here's what D looked like. Also recall that W we set to 24 and M was set to 29. Let's find out the terms in sequence E. So we'll take our value of W, which is 24, and that gets multiplied to the first term in D, mod 29. 24 times 2 is 48, mod 29. To find out the answer to that, we simply take 48, divide it by 29. Using long division, we're looking for the remainder. 29 fits into 48 once, and this leaves us a remainder of 19. And that will be the first term in your public key. So we just have to repeat this three more times. So E sub 1 was 19. E sub 2 is 24 times 3, which is 72, mod 29. And the remainder for this one, if you do the calculation, is 14. So that will serve as the second term in the sequence, 14. For E sub 3, we take 24 again, but this time we multiply it by 7 mod 29. And the remainder, after dividing 168 by 29, is 23. And for the last term in the public key, we take 24, multiply it to 13, mod 29. That results into 312 mod 29. And the remainder happens to be 22. What we have generated here, the sequence E, serves as our public key, which will then be used to encrypt messages. In part two, we'll look at how we can use this public key to encrypt a message, produce a ciphertext, then decrypt it back using our private key. Thank you for watching.